Oh, oh, no. I hope this day would never come. I suppose it's time to hunt down a beautiful zombie takeout. Hmm. What's up? Welcome to episode 408 of Zombie Takeout, the B Movie and Cult Movie Podcast. I'm John. And I'm Scotto. And joining us, as I mentioned last week, once again is Jen Miller. Hello. And without any further ado, on to this week's movie, which is from 2016, Caris Hell. Um, this one I found out about because of Jen, actually. You posted about, uh, about it on Facebook. I saw the trailer, said we have to review this thing, oh and you God. said, yeah, I, I went in on that. <laughs> I don't even know how I came across it now, but I just, as soon as I saw it, I'm like, this is amazing. This yeah, is- I don't know how this got by us. I mean, this is, uh-huh. this is tremendous. Obviously, you can see where this episode is going, people. I mean, I took the liberty of putting down five for all of us. We'll see how that pans out. Yeah, no, no. This, yeah, this is a um, Of nice. course, that brings us <laughs> to the impromptu plot summary, sponsored by Kids Not, with its secret blend of 11 germs and bacteria, it's the only thing putrid enough to piss off a sentient carousel unicorn so much that it breaks free and goes on a killing spree. And uh, actually, should uh, should you, do you have one, Jen? Oh, I was just going to, it's well brought to you by Otis Bark Myers GoFundMe account. Please help. A free decent with every donation. <laughs> And also brought to you by Captain Z's totally accurate pirate wine. It's 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 nothing fancy. <laughs> All right, so uh, we have the most man. This plot oh, summary is just this plot summary is so easy. It's uh, I mean, easy, but it's also complicated. It, it's totally logical. I mean, we have a carousel. <laughs> We have a kid riding the carousel who's a little too big to be riding carousels, mm-hmm. but he's uh, he's beating up the horse. He's putting his snots on it. He's um, he's defiling this thing, <laughs> and of course, it uh, it's not going to take it anymore. It uh, breaks free of the carousel with um, a, as uh, incredible special effects as you can imagine, mm-hmm. and uh, it starts a killing spree, and. Uh, well, spoiler alert, um, you might be expecting a lot of just hornings and, and uh, gorings no. and whatnot, yeah. but no, no, it is, variety is the spice of death, I guess. Yeah, the, anyway. mur- the, the murder weapons get better and better. Yeah, uh, and, and he, just, he just mows down anybody within first, well, he's on the quest to get the kid back. Mm-hmm. But he also kills uh, just about anybody along the way. But uh, there's luckily a sheriff in the park who was um, a cowboy cool, who uh, was keeping an eye on this Nazi Mustang and uh, chases him to this party where this underage kid is. And uh, they they have a confrontation involving a pizza man and hilarity ensues. <laughs> And I like that from the beginning, the horse is sentient. It doesn't like come to life after the kid abuses it. The, the unicorn, I should say. The, the, the narration in the opening, at first you think it's the guy sitting at the table. Bitch, oh, yeah, oh, yeah that, that got me too. I was like, oh, it's the horse talking. <laughs> And you don't expect that voice in those bodies that they're they're mm-hmm. they're showing. Actually, the first one you don't expect. Then it's the this one, really maybe. low kind of drawling voice. Um, if you remember General Bastard from uh, Thanks Killing, sounds kind of like that. I was thinking more of Waldo from the Van Halen videos. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. No, I can see that. But yeah, um, Duke uh, the Unicorn has this opening narration, which is hilarious. And th- I also love when they're they're going around the um the park called the, the Tarnation Corral. <laughs> Great name. <laughs> they have these teacups that are like have like slime coming out of them, kind of like a nuclear waste theme. And I was saying to Scott before you got here, Jen, they out trauma trauma. 
with this right, movie. Right, there was a very toxic Avenger feel to the uh, to the amusement yeah. park itself, which I think was a real amusement park, but I think yeah. they did some oh, yeah. licensing too. Of course, yeah, they they adjusted it. Yeah. Um, and then we cut to this family, these two siblings, a teenage, say like a you twelve-year-old know, kid, his older sister, and their mother. Their their mother's getting ready for work. And, you know, she's telling the daughter that she has to watch the son while she's at work. And the daughter's complaining because, you know, she had plans, blah, blah, blah. And they're they're talking about, you know, what they're going to do while, you know, the sister has to watch him. And apparently the kid collects lunchboxes. That's what he's called lunchbox. Oh, I recognize. What are the lunchboxes? On the shelf mm-hmm. was was one from yeah. the dollar store that I got. Like I was like, I got, oh, nice. that, I got that little lunchbox, the Santa <laughs> lunchbox. It was from the dollar store. <laughs> anyway, but there's this was weird bit of trivia about how you know that it's not worth anything on the resale market if the thermos doesn't match. <laughs> so it's just this weird <laughs> tangent that they take. Yeah, and yeah, it has absolutely nothing to do with anything else in the movie. It never comes back, no, no. or anything. It's just this weird little detail they throw in and seven minutes in the unicorn breaks free and i was already on its side of course (laughs) it was perfect for a horror comedy because from the minute they introduced the unicorn you're on its side i was also kind of on lunchbox's side only because i hated the sister (laughs) she said hashtag before just about everything which is a big pet peeve of mine i hate that Oh, I'm just—I'm just, I'm just going to start saying that all the time now. <laughs> um, but I, I love seeing him I was fly around. Say, hashtag easily triggered. <laughs> not, quite, not quite that. It's just annoying. But, hashtag, oh my god! Um, but I love seeing him fly around the park. You know, you actually see it's—it's it's a wire trick. But yeah, you know, yeah. seeing the unicorn duke flying around, the gore in this film is amazing. <laughs> That's where all the effects are real are really yeah. there. I mean, yeah. they they're so goofy with the movement of the unicorn and the the hooves. Oh One point, he's holding a machete. <laughs> <laughs> well, what I think once I knew I was on board for real with this movie, uh-huh. the Chinese stars. <laughs> yes. He runs I'm into like, this. Wait, what? <laughs> Duke runs into this couple having a picnic in a park. The guy just look, you know, says something to Duke, turns his back on Duke, and just falls. And you see like five throwing stars in the guy's back. It's just the horse. They're just that that moment that they take where you're just like looking at the horse that's just sitting there, of course, mm-hmm. and looking at the star sticking out of his back. <laughs> Wait, what? Did he do? No. <laughs> but before that, there's another very trauma moment. Um, the girl, the sister meets up with her boyfriend at the park because he works there. And they're in the car, you know, having some fun. And then they cut to the back seat, and there's Lunchbox. Yeah. <laughs> Love that. And then there's Cowboy Cool, or as I called him early on, Foam Indiana Jones. <laughs> Because he looks like Indiana Jones, but like one of those, you know, kind of furry, anim- you know, costumed characters in a park. I, th- I thought he was almost like Woody from Toy Story. You know, yeah, something. kind of like that too. But I think the leather jacket just made it a little more yeah. indie for me. Yeah. Um, like one of those uh, wind balloon car dealership si- <laughs> yeah, yeah. Baby things with a leather jacket and cowboy hat. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, apparently he knew Duke was going to wake up. And he had this special, you know, cursed gun prepared for him. Wow. Um, I loved that part. That's when I said it was five brains, when he's opening the gun. Well, like when he says he hit it in the ball pit. Just, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and ball, at that point, I knew if it came down to Duke and Lunchbox, I didn't know who I was rooting for. <laughs> I mean, it kind of did, too, um, in a very thanks-killing kind of way, too. Oh, definitely, yeah. Um, or or the Monty obvious... Python, you could almost say. Yeah, yeah, very Python, too. Well, that's where the, a lot of, you know, p- thanks-killing definitely got it from. Trauma, probably, too. Um, love the obvious close-up of the wine bottle. Like, they cut to the shot, like, two seconds before she puts the bottle in frame. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there was a lot of that in this, where they were just stalling to get the shot in, mm. pausing for the edit. 
And then we get to the party, which is so out of context with the rest of the movie. It's almost a separate movie. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Movie within a movie. Well, at first I was like, okay, this is going over an hour. That's nice and short. But how are they going to really pull this off to to see the fact that they had kind of a a three act uh, play here? (laughs) In effect, Mm -hmm. was kind of surprising. You you weren't expecting it that well of a structure. I don't remember if I said this on air, but Jen, when I saw Jen's reaction to the movie on Messenger earlier today, I decided to just buy it instead of renting it. No. Just, just trust, trust the recommendation. Yeah. Um, and I wasn't sure if that was the right choice because when I first bought it, I jumped through, I kind of skimmed it, and I landed right in the middle of the party Damn. on the Never Have I Ever scene. <laughs> <laughs> Which like, really uh, doesn't work out of context. Yeah, no. I thought uh, I thought you were you're on the scene where they were doing the um, the unicorn song. <laughs> I gotta say, as a lapsed brony, I did get a kick out of Preston's refusal to that he's into my tiny uni. <laughs> <laughs> they had this little in-universe version of My Little Pony that one of the guys at the party is a huge fan of, um, and, and so he gets mercilessly mocked over it. Um, also, when he, Duke killed the guy outside of the party, the guy, the smoking guy with the mohawk, yeah. he kicks him, and the guy's head just breaks in half. <laughs> it's like in a Thomas and Philip kind of way. Yeah. I think heads would could do that. And when they got to the Never Have I Ever Seen, I just kind of wanted to see Duke burst into the party at that point. Yeah. But no, you know, he, and just he, kill he everybody on the spot. Yeah, yeah. Um, but oh my god, the the Quebec joke. <laughs> yeah, the finding out there's these two, there's two siblings at the party who were French, um, and you find that at one point they 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 are sleeping together, um, in the do through the never have ever game, and then they establish that they're Quebecois. Um, I, I'm sure you know, as Canadian by marriage, Scott, you got a kick out of that one. Of course, <laughs> racist. <laughs> And my favorite murder weapon was around that time, too. Um, there's two guys outside of the party, very drunk, so, you know, doing the whole I love you, man thing, saying they want to die together. And Duke kills them with a pink flamingo. <laughs> <laughs> Just really runs them right through with it. <laughs> and the cheese and the pizza cheese sandwich, I'm very torn on. Why? Why it's you feel- disgusting, <laughs> but also kind of tempting. Uh, no, I think you could have ended that sentence with disgusting. <laughs> I don't know. It's one of those things I kind of want to try. Dude, that's American <laughs> cheese he was putting on that. <laughs> I kind of like American cheese. Yeah, but not on pizza. Well, uh, yeah, that's the issue. It's, like, I don't, I, I, it's two really things tried. that I don't necessarily know would go great together, but maybe. Oh, unfortunately, um, I think I have. But, you know, there's some places where oh we'll god, not just put mozzarella. And you, you know. Oh yeah, like, well yeah, oh, you're you're this? Jesus, you're far from the tri-state area, so right. Yeah, <laughs> if it's not the if it's any kind of New York style pizza, it's probably quite tragic. Um, right. <laughs> loved Preston's girlfriend, fucking Duke. <laughs> she is apparently sexually attracted to unicorns they take him upstairs because you know duke is a brony or no not duke preston her boyfriend's a brony so he he has it brought into the bedroom and his girlfriend slips up to the bedroom and actually i mean we don't see that on camera but yeah she fucks um duke um I should mention the pizza guy shows up eventually um this never guy. gets never gets paid. Just Poor hangs out, just demanding his money. Um, the pizza guy was played by the director. Um, oh, Steve this is the director. <laughs> What's that? The director? Yeah, oh, that was the director. Oh, um, yeah. Loved the artist Barkmeyer rant. His dog, his dog needs surgery. That's why he's you know has to work as a pizza guy so he can save up the money for his dog surgery. Um, and then when Duke finally does show up to the party. I loved the line, please remain seated while the murder is in motion. <laughs> I actually applauded that line. Oh and then the other killer showing up. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that was great. Well, the killer was there all along, actually. 
but that okay. never in the never have I ever game he he kind of gave up that there was something wrong. <laughs> Oh, I didn't notice that. Yes. Oh, okay. Well, that was the thing. Like, never have I ever killed a man in cold blood. And it's like, wow. Well, right. the same guy. <laughs> yeah, so okay. he puts his hand down. He's like, yeah, well, what can I do? Uh, no, kind of. And okay, nobody I didn't reacts. realize it was the same guy. Yeah. Nobody reacts. And then, so it yeah. goes past you. <laughs> so, so it was set up. It wasn't even like an absurd, like, right. what's this okay. guy doing here? No, he was there from the beginning. <laughs> oh, wow. Um, <laughs> Of course, he kills almost everybody at the party except the pizza guy, the sister, and, and Lunchbox. They run out to his, the pizza guy's car, and he says, "What if we give you your give him your brother?" <laughs> That's what he wants. <laughs> Which was, even, I mean, even for this movie, it was kind of like a whoa. <laughs> yeah, it was a throwaway line, but it just the way it was delivered was brilliant. <laughs> kind of like, I can't we're... believe they, they went there. Yeah, I guess we're kind of supposed to like the guy at this point. Right. <laughs> and he's saying, what if we just give it to your brother? <laughs> and the mace worked. <laughs> the, the sister gets out of the car, oh. maces the, the unicorn, and it works. <laughs> yeah, yeah, look at that work. <laughs> For a while, I was thinking that she was, she was going to kill him because it seemed like she was the only one who could hurt him. You know? Yeah. <laughs> Um, oh, just did you notice when she closed the blinds, you could see another killer outside? No, no, I didn't there see that. There was something behind in the other side of the window when she closed the blinds. Loved that. And then, of course, Cowboy Cool shows up at the party with the gun. <laughs> and the one, the one hashtag that didn't annoy me, she said hashtag no. <laughs> <laughs> And then he, of course, he kills the pizza guy with a pizza cutter. It takes forever. He says, he actually says, I chose a poor weapon. I just, I love how he just he just keeps talking through the whole thing while he's like being murdered. With, you know, oh, he's this like, is oh, taking like, it off a long time. time. <laughs> I'm sorry, pizza. Cowboy you Cool shows up. They duel. That was awesome. I thought Cowboy Cool was actually going to kill him. But he actually takes down Cowboy Cool. Um, they kind of take each other out. Yeah, yeah. Um, but right after I finished typing that I thought the sister was going to cool, kill Duke because she was the only one who could, could hurt him with the mace and then with the hanger, he kills her. <laughs> By melting her with eye lasers. <laughs> yeah, you know. He's got to switch it up. And, it, and it's like, it's if you've ever seen that that Lou Reed video where these they have that animatronic head of him that just kind of melts, yeah. it kind of reminded me of that. Whoa, yeah. I don't think I've um, seen that video. Um, I'll look it up later. Um, and then of course, and yeah, we can't spoil anything in this movie. There's no, you know, <laughs> yeah, well, you yeah, can know no, exactly what's coming, and it's brilliant. Yeah, um, the rainbow blood pouring out of Duke after Cowboy <laughs> Kill shot, shot him. <laughs> And then oh, there's yeah. there are two stingers because you think, you know, it's all the crisis has been averted. Duke's dead. Um, Lunchbox has to walk home after his sister's killed. And then the pizza guy, he doesn't have, nobody has a car. Um, Cowboy Cool dies. And as Lunchbox is walking home, a car comes. He starts waving, hitchhiking. The car just runs him over. And it's Duke. Drive in a very, in a very sort of um, end of thanks killing kind of stinger, and then we get the second stinger. Um, in the beginning of, of I mentioned, you know, lunchbox and the sister's mother going off to work. She's an exotic dancer who looks um, a lot like Rosie Perez. Yeah, a little bit. Um, so at the end of the movie, she shows up at the party. Apparently, their mother was hired f- to dance at the party they were at. <laughs> I didn't get that. I was kind of wondering why she was there. Yeah, she was hired to work there. The stingers are insane. There were three stingers <laughs> before the credits. We That's... get Duke killing Lunchbox, and then the mother showing up at the party, and then she goes upstairs, sees the Preston's girlfriend's corpse after you know after she had sex with the horse or with the unicorn, and we see Son of Duke. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. 
And of course, we get a little Otis after we get actual photos of Otis after the credits. I, I suspect it was incredibly adorable. I suspect that's probably Steve, Steve Rudzinski's actual dog. Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, on to sequels and remakes, because with those stingers, this needs a sequel. Oh, my God. Oh, I don't know. Uh, do you want to just like leave this as is? You know, uh, I get your, your point. One and done would be perfect. It would be good. I think he has a tendency of doing sequels, considering like I- I've seen a lot of Meowy Christmases and I need to watch Meowy. This. Yeah, I think yeah. I do too. <laughs> the, the plot, but... the, the the plot for Meowy Christmas is uh, insane. It's like a, a talking cat who mistakes these two burglars for aliens, and, and oh it's just yeah, <laughs> yeah. I need to see that. Um... I get your point. Yeah, leaving it one and done it would be a, a nice twist, considering it sets up a sequel so blatantly. Yeah, but I want to see who goes after him next because we can't have the return of Cowboy Cool, so they have to ant- up the ante on that. Well, they need more of the carousel horse, the other carousel horses to, to come alive. Yeah, you know, it's yeah, your whole gang. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that would be yes. Maybe it's horse against horse. That that would be not, a, yes. unicorn, not horse. <laughs> yes, I kept oh, correcting sorry. myself. Um, underbrains. Maybe the son goes after the father. Yeah. Ooh. Ah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. This is for my mother. She just loved unicorns. <laughs> underbrains. Underbrains. Are we all unanimous on this one? Oh, yeah. I am. Five yeah, now. Yeah. <laughs> the the easy five. Yeah. Totally. This, I, I said this on the messenger thread. This may be the best B movie we've ever reviewed. <laughs> Man, and, and as a trauma fan, that's saying something. I mean, we got Bad Ben. It definitely goes to the Hall of Fame. Yeah, yeah, it's it's definitely one of the best. Um, so, what have we learned? Uh, rest in peace, Otis Sparkmeyer. Hmm. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's the worst end. I want to see, you know, tied up in the sequel. What happened to uh-huh. Otis Sparkmeyer? Uh, and Otis, Otis Sparkmeyer's revenge. <gasps> I don't. That, Otis Sparkmeyer revenges his Oh, murder. yes. <laughs> yes, that's the sequel. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I learned that mass murder catchphrases don't just happen. You have to really work on them. <laughs> that, that, was, that was probably the second bit when he did the in hell. Oh, I'm I'm sorry. I I I'm not like five times this morning. The apology for that. Oh my god. Yeah. I had to like pause and I was laughing so hard. <laughs> All right. So thanks for joining us, Jen. Is there anything you'd like to plug? Um just you know, well, I guess just my website, jennydreadful.com. But you know, okay. yeah. There'll be a link of <laughs> for that link to that in all of the relevant places. Yeah. And until next time we'll be reviewing Velocipaster. Um, <laughs> which you also recommended. Um, you reminded me of it actually, Jen, because I had oh, found yeah. it a couple of years ago, and you then you had messaged me to tell me about it. <laughs> oh, I know how I find them because I follow them like <laughs> Until then, of course, always remember, never forget wherever you go in life, there you, there are. you are. There you are.